I talk to y'all about pain? I don't remember if I talked to y'all about pain. If I didn't, if I, it's on my list, but in case I forgot, um, right now I'm probably like, I got titties. This is the first time I'm seeing them. Ooh, okay, there it is. It's a lot of material, golly. Actually, now that I remove that, it feels better. Yeah, this is really tight. Here it is. Removing it. Let me see. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Here's my piece. Put this back. Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Can I confess something to y'all? I have always wanted to say that. I always wanted to do like YouTube videos, but I've been scared. But welcome to my YouTube. I am going to talk about my breast augmentation job whatever you want to call it um you just watched a video that was one day post-op that was the first time that i saw the girls um and today is day four so i'm just gonna give you the rundown i'm gonna give you the tea okay so the first first and foremost i'm in philly and i went to dr ian lanagan he is in delaware he does his surgeries out of a hospital, Wilmington Hospital. Um, I don't know if he does it any other place, any other hospital, but I know that I went to that hospital. Um, and I wanna touch briefly on why it's beneficial to go to a doctor that does his surgeries in a hospital versus someone that does his surgeries in like a clinic. I'm very winded. Um, by the way, yeah, if I sound, if my breathing sounds labored, it's because it is. Um, when you get your boobs done, it's like a tight sensation. Like, I feel like my boobs are really tight right now, which they are. And like, it feels like someone's sitting on your chest. Um, and it's just frightening. I think I've been moving around a little bit too much. Actually, that's not good. I read that that's not good. Because I've been trying to like assemble the lights and stuff for the video so that's not good um they advise you not to do anything that is laborious so i actually did something bad <sighs> but i'm gonna try to just take some breaths and get into this video i want to do a video like on surgery meals surgery factors like whatever you guys i don't know that's what people refer to them as and if you guys want me to get into that because i have experience with that i booked this is my third time booking the surgery I booked two times at a surgery meal, two different surgery meals in Miami. I don't know if I can get in trouble for calling their names, so can you guys let me know if I'll get in trouble? The first one is M blank blank Aesthetics in Miami. That was 2018. And then most recently I went, I booked with AVA blank blank plastic surgery in Miami. Um, and I'm so happy that I did not do it. Um, I have felt so comfortable with this doctor in the hospital. So if you want me to do like pros and cons, you know, to doing like the cheaper way in Miami, I can get into it. But like, I don't know if I can call their names and stuff, but I can definitely give you the tea on that. Um, but yeah, I felt really like comfortable. I was not nervous about going into surgery uh, with this doctor. And let me tell you, if your doctor does his surgery in a hospital setting, let me tell you the benefit of that. Let me just off the bat. So before surgery, I signed this paper. It said, in the event that something goes wrong during surgery, do we have your permission to call a specialist to come and help you? That is especially important because just because someone is 
healthy. It doesn't mean that your surgery will go smoothly. Yes, it's an indicator that things might go well, but you just never know. Um, and there's a story, I read this story when I was doing my research on boob jobs. This young lady, she was in America, not the DR, not Columbia. She had her operation here in America at a clinic. Um, basically, right as they were putting her under like the anesthesia, she became unresponsive. And um, this is my own conclusion, but I feel like this, the clinic didn't want like a bad reputation. So they didn't call the ambulance immediately. They just like left her there in the, um, the room. And by the time they called the ambulance, it was way too late. She was already brain dead. If you want me to relink that story, I can definitely do that. It's just, it was a popular story. So I can definitely find you the link. So I'm just saying, do your research, do your research, do your research. And I have some notes so I can stay on track. Cause as you can tell, I've been going off and on. Um, I got silicone implants moderate plus profile in addition to your surgeon have a wish pick to know what look you want to have after surgery that's very important because you feeling confident in yourself and you being happy with your results is very important so bring a wish pick to your surgeon now let me add on to that just because you want your breast to look a certain way or you want something to happen it doesn't mean that it might be possible so let me give you my story i have silicone i want silicone because silicone feels natural silicone also is more so like if you want a more natural look a natural feel but also a natural look i have matter plus when my breasts are completely healed they're going to look like just regular um nice titties and i'm going to have side boobs if you want the breasts that has like a lot of cleavage, opt for saline. Or if you want that cleavage plus a natural feel, there's this thing called high profile and ultra high profile silicone. So I called my doctor and I was like, hey, can I choose high profile silicone instead of the moderate plus that I have now? And they agreed. So the day of surgery, um, my doctor came and he was marking me up before surgery. And I was like talking to him about everything because I had concerns. And he was like, it, listen, you're young. That's one. And you don't have any kids. That's important. So as you age, your skin loosens up. And also, if you haven't breastfed, your skin is a little bit tighter. Whenever you breastfeed, it loosens the skin. So he warned me, he said, if I put the high profiles in and it stretches your breasts too much, I'm not doing it. Like, so um, when I came out of surgery, I was like, oh my God, what did I get? Because I, I, my breast was like, as you saw in that other video, my breast had like the bandage. So I, they gave me my breast implant card. By the way, when you do your surgery, they give you a card and it tells you all the information about your implants. The, I think the implants have like codes and stuff on them. So the, the card has it. I should have brought the card with the, with the video, but it's just a little card. I checked my card after surgery and I ended up with the moderate profiles. Another benefit to actually not going to a surgery meal was that my doctor called me the night of surgery. He checked up on me, I asked him questions. And we spoke about coming in to see him for my post-op. And all we talked about why um, you did not give me the high profile. So he said, no, it couldn't work, but I figured anyways. So that was a nice thing. Like if you go to Miami or wherever, you most likely will not receive that phone call if you have any concerns or the fact that I was able to have that individualized experience with my doctor, like it felt really comforting. Like I keep saying, I was not nervous at all. Like people kept on asking me, uh, are you nervous about your surgery? I was not. Um, the only time I got nervous was the morning of the surgery. This one nurse, she overstepped and she was like, oh, you know, when you get out of surgery, you're gonna feel like a Mack truck hit you. And in retrospect, she should not have said that to me um, because everyone's experience is different. Yes, I'm sure there are people who get out of surgery and they are in a lot of pain, but that was not my experience. And 
it made me very very nervous i got so nervous um but later on the anesthesiologist came in and they gave me like something to calm me down like something i don't know what, what it was but it was something to calm the patient down and it worked like i chilled out everybody wants no cost i'm in philly with the area i did delaware philly new york generally speaking you need to have at least five grand if you're trying to have your titties done in this area like i checked a few doctors around um some go up but i think you need at least five grand so this doctor his saline is around five grand and i keep touching my breasts because i was moving too much now they're like they're irritated but saline is five and silicone is six i'm gonna put the doctor's information down below if you call i mean if you call any doctor they're gonna want a, um so the first thing is a consultation after you have your consultation then if you book with the doctor i think the consultation goes towards it depends on the doctor some doctors the consultation goes towards the entire surgery they like they waive the consultation some doctors it's like a separate fee um hundred to secure the date that's all i know um when i had went to my consultation i didn't pay anything at that moment because i wasn't sure i was still like looking around so when i finally decided to come back to this doctor i just paid the 500 and i secured my date by the way my whole process was a two-week process so this is week two so let me do a backtrack so two weeks ago i called the doctor and i was pretty sure and i asked for a date um, we ended up with october 27th um that next day i dropped my 500 dollars off and then the following week i had pre-op this is going to look different for everyone depending like if you schedule your surgery like a year out obviously this will not you know do your pre-op will happen like way out but if you schedule like a date like mine like the whole thing was a two-week process it's gonna happen quickly so i paid my 500 dollars to secure my date the next week i did my pre-op so you do your labs at pre-op and you get on implants to see which one you like what else do you do at pre-op you sign papers you take photos so that's your pre-op I don't have much medically wrong with me, but if you have medical conditions, you're high risk for different things, you are going to have to get medically clear. So be prepared for medical clearance. Um, if you guys want me to do a video on anemia, I am anemic and I had to raise my hemoglobin level for surgery. If you guys want me to do a video on how I did it and I can show you guys what I did. Um, what else is important for you guys? The day of after surgery pain i wouldn't describe this as pain it's really tightness like it feels like like just tightness um i got prescribed percocet and this is day four and i've only used three of the percocets and yesterday i didn't really need to use the percocet it wasn't necessary i just used it because i felt like my right boob was really irritated like it was really annoying me so i took the percocet i have been taking arnica arnica is everywhere a-r-n-i-c-a arnica is available everywhere i got mine off amazon 15 dollars. it's these little tiny pellets you put it underneath your tongue and they dissolve you take it three times a day and arnica isn't just for pain it's for swelling bruises and it's recommended that you start taking it like one or two days before surgery so get you some arnica it's natural it doesn't interact with any drugs you it's a great investment um i have been looking at my breasts like the video that you saw before like they were really high up my left boob is starting to drop like i took my bra off last night and i'm wearing this bra again because the surgical brought up my doctor um had me by it's been rubbing against my incisions by the way my doctor went underneath um that bra has been like rubbing against and irritating my incisions so i had to take it off and put this one back on 
um, that bra though was very odd. So I don't. So the bra that my do my doctor I wish I had brought it. I can't. I wish I had brought the bra, but the bra that my doctor prescribed or advised me to buy, it is a regular bra. Like it, it's a one that you close at the back. But nine times out of ten, when you do research on plastic surgery, they tell you to buy the bras that close in the front, like this one. But my doctor, he swears by that bra, and that's the one he wants us to wear. He said it offers great support, and support is super duper important in the beginning stages of your recovery because your body naturally starts forming like tissue around the boobs and it secures them but right now they're not secure so the bra that you put on needs to offer maximum level of support so that your boobs stay in place if you don't do that and say like say for example you don't want to follow directions and you like go to sleep and you lay down on your side or your bra isn't that supportive your boob is going to fall to the side i don't know you might have to go and get it you might have to go back into surgery to fix that problem so i would advise you to keep your bra on one and find a really good bra to keep the ladies in place so that you can have those results that you desire i mean that's pretty much it for my list if you guys have everything oh and lifting so every doctor is different I so let me tell you how I kind of have been a bad person bad patient I was pretty much fine coming out of surgery like I can move my arms some people said they couldn't move their arms but I can move my arms so I've been doing stuff lifting stuff and then yesterday I read that like if you lift if you are lifting and doing too much it could cause capsular capsular contraction that is what you do not want after your surgery and i'm sure by now you have heard about that if you've been researching boob jobs basically it's when the boob just like it just falls out of place or something and depending on how bad it is sometimes you just have to get the boob removed altogether. but if they catch it like pretty soon you can fix it but if don't be like me now i'm calming down like i haven't been doing anything crazy crazy but i have been since i am able to i have been like doing stuff and i mean i mean i'm i've been wearing my bra and i've been fine i'm i'm probably thinking too hard but for you out there don't do too much like you know f the general advice that i saw is if something feels painful don't do it but nothing has really been feeling like painful so you know like i've been pretty much fine after surgery um this arm was really bad because this is where the bigger implant went but now it's fine like i'm pretty good but yeah the first four weeks you are advised not to live I, so i heard different amounts one doctor when i did a consultation said five pounds I read online yesterday, one person said 10 pounds, and then another person said 20 pounds. I don't know. Basically, I feel like to just be safe, and these are investments, this is a lot of money, just on the other safe side, lift things for the first four weeks, just don't like lift like little things, like just lift like small things, like don't do too much. Stick with the five pound range like don't really do too much um but yeah leave some comments leave some suggestions in down below